Now let's look at a practical interstitial diffusion example. We are looking at uh, still carbon diffusion within iron, and we want you to estimate the so-called interstitial atom jumping frequency. So still we are looking at what types of iron? FCC, gamma iron, which is so-called austenite iron, and uh, if we know the lattice constant for this FCC structure is 0.37 nanometer or 3.7 Armstrong FCC, do you see this? The black dots represent the atoms. The atoms are at uh, corner as well as the face center. This B is our lattice constant. Okay, and uh, if we know. Let's say if we know people married at 1000 degrees C, pretty high temperature, the carbon diffusion coefficient, this interstitial carbon diffusion coefficient, D is 2.5, as what we gave before, times 10 to the minus 11 unit meter square per second. That's a strange unit for diffusion coefficient. We want you to estimate two things. One is what's the successful jumping frequency? the gamma term. The second part, one in how many jumps, how many attempts would lead to a successful jump? Remember, every atom is always vibrating at its lattice side due to thermal vibration, right? As long as we are not at absolute zero K, it's always trying winding around. But uh, I want you to estimate why in how many attempts it's moving, but occasionally it jumps. Why in how many? What's the probability? Okay. To do that, let's think, okay, we know the lattice constant, which is the not alpha, we relate to alpha. We know the diffusion coefficient. What's the solution? How do we do it? Hmm. Jumping distance. What is our jumping distance? What is alpha? Now we are giving you lattice constant. Is this the jumping distance? Where does the atoms, so-called interstitial atoms sit? At so-called interstitial side, which are either at the center, body center, or at the edge center, right? That's our weakened sides. So what's our jumping distance? From here to maybe here, from here to the neighboring, right? It's always jumping to the next nearest neighbor. So do you see that if I start from here, I'm going to jump to here. That's one possibility. If I start from here, I can jump back. Do you see that? Or jump from here to here. So this is alpha. So what's the relationship between alpha and B? Remember B is our lattice constant. What is mathematical relationship between alpha and b? Remember, it's a cube. So do you see that alpha is b divided by square root of 2? Or put another way, this is b from here to here is square root of 2 times from here to here is square root of 2 times b. But from here to here is half of that, right? So square root 2 divided by 2, that's b divided by square root 2, okay? Which is 0.26 nanometer. That's our so-called successful jumping distance. It's not, in this case, not the lattice parameter. Make sense? The geometry? So once we know alpha, remind ourselves, we already know the equation for so-called interstitial diffusion coefficient. The D, as what we gave you before, is 1 over 6, represent what? We said we, we use this for a simple cubic, but we can kind of still use this for FCC, BCC. 1 over 6, that's the probability. Okay, gamma is my successful jumping frequency alpha is your jumping distance in this equation what uh, do we already know d is given as d is given as this 2.5 right alpha is what we just calculated 
can you calculate gamma? Yes, this one simple equation, you can calculate gamma, right? What is D? D is given you. Diffusion coefficient, we said it is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 11. Alpha is what uh, you calculated based on lattice parameter. That's what we got. So we can calculate gamma roughly to be this. Gamma is 6 times D divided by alpha square, and you plug the number in, you are going to get this number. 2.2 .2 times 10 to the power of 9 per second means every second each of the atoms would have successful jump of a significant number. It's actually quite high number. At what temperature? 1000. As you decrease the temperature, this successful jump frequency decrease dramatically. Make sense? Okay. And then the second part, how do we get uh, the one in how many? This one, first we need to know the so-called the lattice vibration frequency. Vibration frequency. I remember every atom is vibrating. What's the vibration frequency? Okay. If you learn the physics, you would have something like this. KT means the thermal energy equals h mu. That's when we start to think of quantumized. H is so-called the Planck constant, right? Mu is your vibration frequency. When you vibrate, what's your total energy? It's the your vibration frequency times a Planck constant. That gives you your thermal energy, we get this. And from here, what do we know? K, do we know? Boltzmann constant. T is your temperature. What is our temperature? We said it's 1000 degrees C or 1273K. H, Planck constant. Can you know mu? Your mu would be your so-called thermal vibration frequency, which means how fast it's vibrating. It's trying. It's trying to jump. You are going to get a number that is even larger. You plug the number in. Planck constant, 6.63 10 to the negative 34. And uh, this one, 1.38. That's your Boltzmann constant. And then you are going to get a vibration frequency of an even larger number. It has a unit of what? Still per second. So now you have the vibration frequency, you have the successful jump frequency. Right? You can you have the successful jump frequency, you have the vibration frequency. To understand okay, how why in how many attempts are successful? You just divide it by the successful jump frequency by the vibration frequency. You get a very small number, 10 to the power of negative 4. What does this mean? It means 1 in 10,000 jumps is successful. It's vibrating, but 1 in 10,000 moves to the neighboring side. Make sense? The atoms are always vibrating due to thermal vibration, but occasionally it jumps to the neighboring side. Questions? Okay. That gives you a perspective. Interstitial diffusion. We said we are dealing with dilute alloy, which means for any interstitial site, the neighboring sites are most likely to be weakened. That's why we don't count, we just let them happen. Make sense? And then we estimate roughly. Remember, all these are only estimation. It gives you a feeling, gives you an idea. Okay, how many? One in two? One in ten? One in hundred? In this case, at this temperature, one in 10,000 at 1,000 degrees C. And you can imagine when the temperature goes lower, 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 you need more times to have a successful jump. Make sense?